I would say a lot of what leaders reward is not highly conscious. And so how do you look at what am I rewarding? What do I acknowledge? What do I celebrate? What do I notice? What do I talk about um, when, you know, behind people's backs? What do you, what do you really, what are you really focused on? I mean, it's amazing to me that sometimes people make leadership look like this horrible drudge. I mean, it looks like, oh, why would you want to be a leader? It looks so painful. So as a leader, are you inspiring people with your genuine passion? And so if you're seeing a what's next, how well are you communicating that vision so that they can get excited about it too? How can you inspire a culture where people are really welcome to share their opinions and their views and genuinely be heard. And I think it's interesting now, the research shows that the number one, without exception, thing that is needed on a team in order for it to be, you know, especially successful or, or effective is psychological safety. So psychological safety, imagine if leaders only focused on that. And it doesn't mean everybody gets a vote. Psychological safety is not necessarily about agreement or everybody you know, being kumbaya. It is about a level of integrity and honesty and authenticity where people can genuinely speak their mind um, so that better decisions can be made just witnessing the choices that people make or the way that in which people um, challenge themselves to grow and in which ways people really shrink from growth or are fearful of change or are feel fearful of, um, actually sometimes it's fear of e even the vulnerability of really great stuff. It's easy to agree with good ideas. I think everybody agrees, easily agrees with good ideas and they don't necessarily have the capacity or the courage to really deeply embody those ideas so that it becomes who they are, not just what they think. And I think when it's a culture of where people are, are genuinely recognized and that becomes okay or the goal, that um, it becomes a, cur a culture then of inspiring others to share their good ideas, um, to be willing to be influential. It's, it's, it's all about the leadership and what they really reward. If you're the leader, what are the risks? I mean, what risks are you taking that are healthy risks that your people see you taking to create a more meaningful existence for yourself, both as a leader and as a human being? You are genuinely leading them, whether you're aware of it or not, not just in business, but how you show up in your life. So share with them so that they can also, uh, give themselves permission to do more of the same thing. And absolutely being, having clarity about, you know, what do you track and what, how do people know they're successful? I mean, in a lot of organizations, they have no clue what they're really being judged on and what is um, being measured, even if it's an informal measurement. So having great clarity about what it is that you are really looking for in terms of deliverables from them so that they can know, hey, we're, we're on track or I'm on track. So think about the difference between we have to be ahead of the curve, we have to be like ahead of the next two things versus this open curiosity about ah, what's next and where are we going and won't it be fun and can't wait to do this with all of you, whoever your team is. I mean, in what are you, what is the nature of your inspirational leadership? I mean, I think growth is really the opportunity. If, if people aren't growing, they're, they're dying. And so they may look like they, uh, you know, on the surface are doing well, but if they're not growing, uh, it's not a great life. 
So if you don't have, if your life is just not packed full of interesting people that are growing, I would say you have some opportunity to meet some new folks.